well. When the boys at Jones say, let's go get your, uh, get your trolling motor calibrated, I guess we don't get to pick the weather. We're not gonna be here long, but we're gonna show you how to do this. I let Taylor crank the Puma for the first time. Actually, I guess Ross cranked it for the first time when they did the walkthrough on it, but the first time in the water, he cranked it, so. Here we go. I'm not digging on that lightning. You know it? Yeah, it's not ideal. Not ideal. Taylor, what are you doing? All right, so we're gonna start off. We're gonna do the uh, compass calibration for the heading sensor. So I'm gonna run everybody back through everything real quick. So we're just gonna hit, we hit menu or options and we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna go to communications. We're gonna go to NEMA 2000 setup, device list. And right here we got the 24XD, that's the heading sensor. Review, and we're gonna do compass calibration. Turn the boat one and a half times any direction. Hit begin. And this will tell all the units, so once you set one, it'll set this one too? Yep, yep. That hitting sensor works for all of them. So once we get that set through, we're good to go on that. And that'll keep our map from spinning while we're sitting out offshore on a brush pile or on a wad of fish out on Rayburn. Wad of fish, what's that all about? Well, you know, they I could get on them walking the bank the last four months. <laughs> I know the feeling. That's right, you've been without a boat, too. Yep, finally fished the first tournament out of it. How did you get up Norwood? Oh, we had uh, right at 15 pounds and got absolutely curb stomped. All right, we're good to go there. So, we're going to go back out here and we're just going to run through all of our settings real quick on our sonars make sure they all look good so up here on our side view I've already set our color palette to the inverse grayscale that's just what I prefer just because it's easier to pick out your hard spots like see that bank line right there where mm -hmm. the creek channel swing is and then being able to see our stumps and everything real good and fish will show up really bright white as well but we're going to bring this contrast up just a little bit more to brighten up our bottom a little bit that's about how I'd like to run mine. I don't really change any of the advanced settings on these. That's what I say about these units. They're really good and user friendly as far as not having to do a whole lot. That contrast is your best friend with these. So, and you know, now we're still only in, you know, eight foot of water here. So, you know, we're not getting a ton of picture out on the sides, mm -hmm. but here where it is, we got good details. So that's good. We got our through hole working here for our depth on plane don't really do a whole lot to that it's pretty good on auto so sometimes these bass cats the way the holes are built you'll see it's a little little bit thin on the bottom down here but we're still able to see you know some bait down here on the bottom so you might come in here to your gain and bring it up just a hair Ooh, lightning. so we're good there clear view same way soft bottom lake up here on this north end where we are right now so we'll go ahead and bring that up just a little bit on the contrast because up here about 62 63 I, a lot of my stuff that i run i run the same graph and transducer setup and i like those mid 60s on my setup a lot so everything looks good here we got our map pulled up and working so gps is finding and everything is good there all the transducers are reading to the right place so we're going to set up the trolling motor and live scope now okay All right, so see, first time out, the transducers just recognize their auto orientation for the way they're set up. We're gonna go ahead and change that. That way we don't have to deal with the auto kicking in and out. So we want that one on perspective. Okay. And this one here, we want it on forward. Ooh. So now what I'm gonna do and this is kind of a trial and error thing when you're running two live scopes. When you come in here to communications and go to your marine network, you're going to see both of your live scope systems. 
there's no way to know which one of them's which that until you name them right here so we're just going to take a shot in the dark here let's so see that was the wrong one so see how the yep, name didn't yep, change yep. here so we're going to go back in here and change this one so now i know which is which yep gotcha. and i'll show you on your home page it'll be easy to see there so now if we went to home here now they're named right out yep So, perspective, I'm going to turn up here toward this bank line here. And so you can see our little point right here, a little undercut bank right up there. We're going to go ahead, come in here. I like my noise rejection, and it's, it's all pure personal preference. I like high on perspective just to try to filter out some of that water clutter, which we still got a lot of pollen up here, and I'm sure you can tell it's sinking in the water now because of the rain. So not the prettiest in the world but i've grown to like the moss really Ooh, good man, it lights up, doesn't it? yep and i still like to run my color gain up a little bit and we're going to tone all that back down since we're on such a hard bank here but i like to go ahead and run that to 100 and then we'll tone that down just a hair and now on the forward you know the same settings we've all come to love for a good base to start with we like noise rejection on high the ghost off tvg off or low during the spring sometimes on our appearance we want our color gain up about 90 color limit i'm still kind of running it off right now and in color scheme you know it's all per what you like um i run amber a lot i also run the caribbean a lot that's just my two favorite fish right there, Tanner. He just swung off the bank. Yep. He's sitting up there waiting. Been waiting on us all night. Yeah. If no lightning, we would be fishing for him. Exactly. So, so we're done? Yep. Yeah, we'll go. Well, one thing we are going to do, I'm going to show you how to link this trolling motor to the graph. That way we can set up the spot lock or the anchor real quick on that. We're going to go in here to settings, communication. I'm going to pause it. Okay. All right. Ready? This is fish moving around up there. I know, those suckers so full of fish. All right, so we're going to set up the trolling motor real quick. We go here, options, go to settings, communications. We're going to go to wireless devices right here. And so we see Garmin trolling motor right here. So we got to enable Wi Fi here. And that's just your network name there. We don't have to change that. And then make a password. I always just do them eight letter A's. Eight? Yep, okay. eight of them. Cause that's your- Yeah, don't be messing with my password. Yep. So we got that. We're gonna go back here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here on the trolling motor itself on the display panel. We're gonna hit this power button just three times. And now our sync light's gonna go blue. That indicates pair mode. And then we're going to come back down here and hit start. That way it's searching. And there we go. We got the trolling motor connected. That's so it. what we're going to do now, just real quick, we can come right here on our menu to our toolbars. We're going to add, we got the trolling motor bar here and add that. So that way we can come in here to the menu and, and by the way, for guys that don't know, we're really looking at a Garmin screen, although it's on an NVT. So this would be a, a, any Garmin unit would do the same thing, right? That's right. That's same right. Same setup, same menu. Absolutely. And so we're going to do the steering calibration right here. We're going to hit begin. And then now we're just going to jump over here on the trolling motor. We'll turn that bad boy to the side. And since we got flat calm water, we'll just do this one slow today. But I usually run my speed three to four bars, you know, nothing over half and just make a, 
make a quick circle here one and a half times and just watch your status progress right there and as soon as she hits 100 you'll be able to use your anchor function so if you don't have a garmin graph does the anchor function work on the force yes okay. and it, it what you would do then is you would calibrate it through your remote okay do as i say not as i do so you're just doing a circle yep that's all we're doing it's just like doing this uh Hitting calibration for the graphs. So there we go. And hit OK. Back. And we're going to go ahead and take that toolbar off because we don't need it most of the time. That's just something to get you out of a bind if you ever had an issue with your foot pedal or something like that. I've been in a tournament and had that happen before. Uh, that toolbar, I know it's a pain, but if you're just, you know, drift fishing on a flat or something like that, being able to adjust your steering and, and run your trolling motor through that, if you're like me and you forget to put batteries in your remote. Hmm. Is there a way to do this off the water? Calibrations and stuff. I, I guess you could do that graph just putting the parking lot pulling it with yes. the truck, can't you? I was, was going to say, we've done that before. Yeah, but with this, you got to be on the water. Yeah, because if you can't get it all the way down deployed, it's not going to let you do right. it. Now, if you got a trailer where you can deploy it, more power. But... Yeah, we got her all set up. So my spot lock should work now? Yep, anchor will work now. So since I don't know this trolling motor, what are my lights up there? So across the top from left to right, your green lights is battery, GPS status, and then sync status. If you ever had an error code, that's where it'll flash to so you you've go. got a problem. Okay. Um, and then, you know, on the actual panel, you've got up the middle your speed indication. Mm -hmm. Then on the left side of it, you have a power button. And then you have your uh, course lock button. And then on the right side, you have prop and then your anchor. So like right now, it's showing your prop and your anchor engaged. And if we kick it out of spot lock right here, mm -hmm. now we have nothing. If you hit your momentary button, you have prop. You know, that way you know when your prop's on or off. Mm -hmm. It is quiet. Yeah, it is. And now one thing I'm going to show, as we talked about last night, I do have a lockout for this button for the course lock down here. Oh, yeah. A lot of people that like me that stand on their left foot and use the trolling motor with the right, they'll bump that constantly. And if you watch that trolling motor head, it just it'll start jumping around if you were moving across a flat, mm -hmm. and it'll throw you out of the boat real quick. So if you hit this button, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it didn't do it. Of course. Maybe it was eight. There it is. So you so, just tapped it six times. Six times really quick. I think I didn't do it quick enough the first time. But once you do it six times, you'll see a little red light down yeah, here. I saw it and flash, that's your foot yeah. pedal indicator light there. Mm -hmm. So like if you hit your prop, you know, it shows its own. Or if you hit this, you know all that's functioning. But you hit that six times real quick, that'll lock that out. That way you don't have to deal with that button. See now, that button's dead. Yep. And if you wanted to bring it back, if you're a guy that uses that sometimes, you would just hit it six times just like that again, and then it would come back. Now it's green, so that tells you it's back home. Cool. If your battery light changes colors, that means you're running out of juice? Yes, so from 100 to 50% is going to be your green light range, and then from 50 to 25 is a yellow light range, and anything below 25 is going to be red, and when she goes dead, dead, she's going to start flashing at you. Okay. All right, so two things are keeping us from fishing, work and lightning. That is true. And I don't like either one of them <laughs> <laughs> when I could be out here throwing a frog. Uh, I get a sense you'd probably get your string stretch today. Yes, no doubt out here around this lake. A lot of bank line grass. I could frog all day out here. Mm -hmm. So Garmin trolling motor has an auto stove feature. When you pull it up, that way it auto aligns itself to where it needs to be. So like for Ken, we've got two live scopes on here. One of them's on the actual barrel of the trolling motor. So with that one, we got to have this thing turned up, prop facing out. So I'm going to come in here on the toolbar to the menu. And right here on your prop stove side, we just want to change that to left. And so now hit back, remove that toolbar. And if we lift the trolling motor. Did y'all see it spun itself? So drop it back down again. So it's straight going the other direction. And when he lifts it. It automatically starts. Oh, it can go two directions because that cable is so flexible. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, crap. 
and it does disable it doesn't lock out your function so you know we can still have this thing picked up and then be able to steer it like we are now if you were in shallow water and grass or something like that so but once it comes up it's gonna stow itself yep okay cool cool we're gonna get out of the lightning guys so we're gonna do an addendum because i asked a question because taylor had mentioned it and he's gonna tell us about it so guys that are more used to like a cable steer trolling motor coming over to one of these garmin forces they do have a pedal adjustment for the tension of the pedal that way because like out of the box it's kind of you know about halfway but it is very loose compared to say an ultrax or a fortrex or something like that so up under the side here it's just at the back of where the momentary button is there is a set screw under here that's an allen key and you can tighten that by turning it you know clockwise and loosen it going counterclockwise and it's got little clicks they're kind of hard to feel but you know if if you're a guy that likes the the tight pedal for scoping or something like that you're probably going to want it tightened up you know, all the way till it stops turning and if you like a loose pedal you know kind of like i do then you want it the other way so but that is a good adjustment here to be able to tune this to how you like it for how you fish beautiful all right so once again thanks to the jones guys for getting me set up and getting me rigged and getting me set up so we're gonna get it off the water guys all right boys so there you go that's uh we calibrated our graphs we've calibrated our trailer motor and uh, we're gonna put it back on the trailer hope you guys uh find that helpful i think that's really cool and now we know how to do this stuff i'll have to refer back to my own video but at least i'll have the video to refer back to You know, you film everything because you never know, but I'm going to do my best not to bust my butt right here. Woohoo! Clean exit.